Hi everyone, thanks for coming along. Uh, so just so you can tell which of us is which, I'm Mike and I'll be doing the, uh, the brief introduction to our big data stack and our Oracle Cloud Services in general as well. And uh, just introduce you to Mark who has got uh, a couple of slides that he'd uh, like to go through to start yeah. off with. So, so you might, I don't know if you sort of saw, they, they changed the, uh, after Car Carthic couldn't make it, and they, they changed the speaker bios on, uh, on, on, um, on, on the website. <clears throat> so you, you might have seen a picture of me, uh, where is it here? So, um, so I, I was on Twitter, and a colleague of mine uh, had changed his photograph to include a hat on there, which I thought was hilarious. So, uh, so, so I kind of put a, a picture of my, so I basically photoshopped a hat onto me, onto, onto Twitter for a day just to kind of like to, to take the mick out of him a little bit. And then, unfortunately, it got onto the speaker bio page on here. So if you're kind of wondering why, why there's a picture of me with a kind of hat on like that, looking like some kind of like intellectual kind of person, um, <clears throat> that's why it is really. I don't wear a hat like that normally. Okay, so uh, in case you're kind of wondering what that was all about. But then I, I kind of thought, well, because I look stupid, um, I would uh, also make Mike, Mike look stupid as well. So I've got uh, on my phone, I've got a whole series of things I can kind of Photoshop lightsabers onto things. And, uh, and a hat as well. So if you're kind of wondering why we both look stupid on the speaker bio, we don't look stupid normally. It's just that, it's just that uh, we, we, we were stitched up by the wrong photo going onto the, uh, onto the website. So uh, just bear that in mind. Uh, OK, so uh, <laughs> continuing on that theme, let's get out down to the, the subject matter. So the Oracle Cloud, um, we've got a, a complete uh, you know, stack of, of products within um, the Oracle Cloud. and. Uh, I don't know, quick show of hands, who uses Oracle within the room? Anybody use the Oracle database, Oracle XC database? Um, that's, that's brilliant. Um, and you know, a lot of the products that Oracle has are now available in the cloud. So there's been a, a massive push within the company to, to cloud enable products and in some cases you know, write products from scratch which can be <coughs> excuse me, made available on the cloud. So um, taking each of the, the layers of of the stack, we've got uh, you know applications that you know our customers use to run their business. So anything from you know customer experience through to uh, HCM, supply chain, manufacturing. So complete suite of products for that side of things. Um, from the perspective of being able to uh, you know spin up a, a variety of compute shapes, where you've got an enterprise grade um, platform. Uh, we have that offering from the infrastructure as a service side, you know, where you get like predictable performance. We're hosting in a data center, and it's completely secure. And then the areas that we're going to talk about today really are around our platform as a service or PaaS. So I was I was going to make a, a really cheap joke and say, here's the. flat on its face. <laughs> so I, I thought I'd let Mark do all the jokes. So here we've got um, what we're going to focus on today. So this is our big data cloud services stack. So each of the layers within a, a kind of a typical big data uh, operation where you know, you're trying to get the data in, so you've got a variety of data sources. Uh, what, what is it? Velocity, variety, volume possibly another V as well, which kind of you know, defines what big data is. So being able to handle all those uh, various data sources, you know, whether they're structured or unstructured or semi-structured, and sort of make sense of those, but then also enrich that with information that you may have from within your internal systems, um, or even enrich it with uh, data that you may have from, from a warehouse, for instance. So within each of those layers, we've got, um, you know, the, we've got some offerings, and this is all available in the, in the cloud as well. So I'm going to hand over to Mark, who's put together um, a really excellent overview of how you can use each of these different services to, um, to I'm not giving too much away, to analyze uh, Twitter interactions around um, Mark's company's website. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Mark. Um, do you okay. want me to be a slide dolly? Or no, I'll do it. Right. Okay. okay. Um, so, so I'm conscious that uh, in terms of yourselves, I, I doubt very many of you have, many, have used much Oracle stuff before, and certainly Oracle Cloud and, and so on. So, um, <clears throat> I thought it'd be interesting to uh, I thought it'd be interesting to to kind of go through this, but really from perspective of somebody, I suppose, who um, you know isn't used to the Oracle stuff, isn't isn't aware of. Uh, if you go back to you know to Mike's slide uh, a moment ago, you probably look at that and you think. There's a whole load of things with Oracle on there. They all look kind of fairly enterprise, fairly expensive, fairly kind of, you know, 
Um, it's hard to work out what they are. What I, tr- what I want to try and do is, is, um, is try and put the stuff that Mike's talking about into some form, form of perspective, where try and, especially trying to understand, well, why would you use these things as opposed to the open source stuff that's out there? Where does it perhaps complement that? And, and I suppose really in a way, you know, why are Oracle putting money and investment into these sort of areas, you know, because probably, how many of you do big data development at all? So, so a few of you do stuff around that. So probably your, you know, natural kind of British cynicism sort of thing is to say, well, you know, why would I want to use these when there's all these fantastic kind of uh, open source projects out there? Um, you know, what, what, what's the value really? Okay, now I don't work for Oracle. They've got me along here, obviously, but um, I, I don't work for them. You know, I, I, it's, it's, I'll, I'll go through where I think the value is. I'll also talk about where we would use, you know, how, how it fits in with the development sort of process that we have, really. Okay, so um, the, the kind of context here really is, so we're, we're, um, we're based down in Brighton, actually. So we're an Oracle partner. Um, we, uh, we do, our kind of history is that we actually, uh, I started the company sort of seven, eight years ago. We had a blog and we have lots of sort of presence on the internet and, and so on, really. And we built the company from that. So a lot of the kind of interest we get a lot of the inquiries we get a lot of the staff that join us and all this kind of stuff it's because of our web presence so we've got we've had a blog going for like 10 years now i've been writing it um you know and all this kind of stuff so there's uh, probably our website is is our is our shop window really okay um and uh and also as we kind of got into into hadoop and, and big data and cloud and so on we thought well let's actually build out a, a, a kind of development lab where we can test this stuff out and we thought a good a good kind of, uh, I suppose, dog fooding kind of exercise would be to use some of these Hadoop and big data technologies and cloud technologies to try and understand, I suppose, the conversation and the activity around our web, our web presence, which is probably not dissimilar to what a lot of people use this technology for. So I want to go through with you how we built it and, and, I, and again, try and put those Oracle products into a bit of context and try and explain you know, where they add a bit of value. Okay. Um, so, so the, the, the kind of scenario we had here is that we have a website, we have Twitter, we have you know, all these kind of things, LinkedIn, all that, and there's a conversation generally going on around us. And, and in particular, a bit like this event, we run an event in Brighton every year, which is, uh, we call it the BI Forum. Um, and uh, and there's, again, there's lots of activity and conversation around that and so on. So we wanted to understand you know, wh- where, the, where the kind of interest is coming from. And as we'll see later on, use things like graph analysis and social network analysis to try and understand, I suppose, the influences and the, and, the, and the conversation paths and so on, okay? So this is the kind of context of what we're doing. There's a number of data sources we have. Uh, there's our website, so the logs from that. We've got Twitter, we've got various things there, content from the website as well coming in. So these are all the kind of the, the sources coming into our, um, our, our kind of project. Now, um, in terms of kind of how we put this together, uh, there's various ways we can do it. You know, so we started off by building it on kind of you know commodity hardware, then moving it into uh, into cloud and so on later on and, and that sort of thing. Um, now the, the interesting thing here is is that um, when we started doing this, we've been doing various iterations of this, and we started off initially by building it all by hand. Okay, so so we'd go and get kind of Cloudera uh, free stuff from from their their kind of like the you know, Cloudera Express. We would kind of build all the scripting by hand and so on. And as time has gone by. As Oracle have been releasing products, we've been trying to understand how these things fit in and what they do and, and so on here. Um, and so yeah, the, the typical kind of process we go through is we ingest this stuff in, we process it, we present it out in, in terms of kind of various tools that are there and, and so on. Now, where it kind of gets interesting, and this is where we start to sort of see the detail of it, um, is when we actually start to try and get some value out of the data. So a typical big data project is going to uh, ingest um, log files, Twitter activity, JSON stuff, you know, all this kind of business, and, and try and do some interesting things with it. And this is where it gets kind of, I suppose, interesting and, and more hard work than you expect. So those of you that do some big data development, you probably, you know, like me, realize that a huge amount of the work that goes into a project is just in the kind of the, the data wrangling, it's the data preparation, and, and so on, really. Um, and in the past, we've done this using things like Python, we've used R, we've used all these various things uh, in, within those packages to do, that, to do that process. And that, you know, a, a skilled person, that's really good. You know, we, we've got kind of, you know, two or three developers who can do clever stuff with R and Python and, and stuff. And we 
we, as we start to kind of to do projects that require, you know, we've got multiple concurrent projects going on or we want to scale things up, that's where things get a bit tricky because those skills are very hard to kind of like to go out on the market and get. And, and obviously, maybe you guys are the ones for that. But, but certainly that's quite hard. And so that's where um, the first of the products that we want to talk about comes in. So in that stack of, of, of products that Mike kind of mentioned there, one of them was something called Oracle Big Data Preparation Cloud Service. Okay. So this is, um, and what this is, is a, is a product within Oracle Cloud that is, is, is really kind of, uh, is aimed at the people who are responsible for that first kind of onboarding of data into a Hadoop system. So you've got a new data source coming in, it's coming in maybe in, in kind of event form or it's coming through Kafka or Flume or, or whatever, you know, into, into your kind of data reservoir. Um, and somebody then has to basically try and understand the data, um, make it suitable and safe to be, to be worked with by, uh, by the end users and, and so on there. And a, and a big challenge here as well is that typically we're talking about what we call schema on read, where, where we have data that is kind of, uh, I suppose, semi-structured or, or you know, needs some form of schema applied to it and so on there. In the past, we've either you know, had very scarce consultants that would do this or we've had you know, IT about to get involved. The idea with this is this tool can look at, for example, you know, the various data sets that are coming in and it can help you understand you know, if, if there is a schema in there somewhere. So if it's, for example, JSON or it's something where you know, if, if you were to read the data, then the schema emerges from that. It can help you with that. It can also identify um, things like column types and so on as well. The idea with this is, is that, and this is like a lot of cloud stuff, the people it's aimed at are not necessarily kind of hardcore kind of IT people. They are people who are in between. They're kind of, I suppose, data domain experts who need to kind of make, these, make data available quickly. Um, they've obviously got a bit of an IT bent because they're using tools like this. But the idea is to use their, their, their experience plus the kind of the leverage from these tools to try and get things done quickly. Okay. So this is a typical kind of data set coming in here. And then the other thing that's clever with uh, this thing called Big Data Prep Service is its use of, um, of machine learning. So under the covers, it uses uh, Apache Spark to do, um, to do kind of, and, and something called word to vec and, and various kind of like machine learning algorithms to um, look at the incoming data and then use pattern matching and recognition and so on to do some of the work that otherwise is fairly routine but needs someone to sort of look at it. So if you look at some data coming in, it would, it would say, well, looking at the values in, in this column, they look like their addresses or they look like their names or something. So it will, it will do things like it will start to automatically name the columns for you. Or if it spots that there are credit card numbers in there or social security numbers, something that would be, uh, needs to be obfuscated, then it will offer to you, you know, do you want, it will highlight these things as being risks and it will then give you a press button thing to obfuscate it. And this kind of looks, you know, this doesn't look like, you know, like rocket science, but not being able to safely bring data through the system, through the process, in my experience, has been it really a real blocker on projects having success. Because if, if you know, there's only one or two people in the company who can do this analysis, who can then do the obfuscation and all that, it just, it just grinds projects to a halt, really. So this tool here, it's a big data prep service. It runs as part of Oracle Cloud. The key, I suppose, innovation is, is the machine learning part that just kind of does a lot of the heavy lifting for you coupled with this kind of service that you can run, you can, you can automate this, you can put it into a, into, a, into a schedule and so on. And so this becomes often the first thing that we kind of like use to, to onboard the data and get something to happen with it. Okay, so, so this, this is the first, one of the first products that we use in, in, in a project. Um, and, and then beyond that point, there, there's often, again, going back to how we used to do things, you would then use kind of various scripts, you might, you know, have some Hive scripts, you might do some stuff in Pig, you might use some, might some stuff in, say, Scala or whatever, do things in, in, in Spark. Um, what we tend to do now is, is there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a tool from Oracle called Oracle Data Integrator, which is, an on, is primarily an on-premise tool, but it can, it can kind of connect to Oracle Cloud, it will connect to different data sources, but the key thing is that it, it uses the Hadoop cluster to do the integration, okay? So a lot of the traditional what we call ETL tools you get in the market, so Informatica, um, you know, various tools like Microsoft Analysis, Microsoft Integration Services, um, they have like a hub that you do the integration through. So like a server, data goes into it, it gets processed and, and pushed out. Now, 
if you're going to do data integration and kind of you know joining of data and, and cleansing it and so on on Hadoop, then typically you don't want to take it out of Hadoop, process it, and then push it back. You want to do your integration on the Hadoop cluster. So what this tool does is it generates HiveQL, it generates uh, Pig Latin, it will generate kind of um, uh, Python to running with Spark, for example, and it will do all the kind of work on there. But it can do this in the cloud as well. Okay, and going forward. There are various plans in Oracle to kind of like take versions of this and, and put it into the cloud, and, and you know, I can't talk about those, but you know, this, but this is an on-premise tool that can easily connect to Hadoop, but also to your on-premise normal data sources as well. So we tend to use this to, in the same way that if any of you have done like data warehousing in the past, but I mean, I've been doing it for a few years now, and, and year, a few years ago there was a move towards what we call you know, these ETL tools away from scripting because you could do things as part of a team. It was model-based development and so on. Um, same thing's happening with, with Hadoop as well. Okay, so this is Oracle Data Integrator. Um, and so this then gives us, this then gives us uh, some nice um, metrics around you know, who is visiting the site, which pages are uh, most popular, and so on. What time does the session actually finish? Is it, is it, is it, is it 12, 10 to 12? 10 to 12, right, brilliant. 10 to 1, 10 to 1, 10 to 1, brilliant. So this, at this point here, we've done the ingestion, we've done some preparation work with, with big data prep services, we've done some data integration with ODI and so on. So this is, and you, you could argue at this point, this is just data warehousing down the cheap because it's been, you know, we're landing data into, into Hadoop, we're doing very kind of traditional sort of things with it, okay. But we've used some of the Oracle tools here to, you know, to, to, to go with the grain of how Hadoop works, but we um, are doing it in a more productive sort of way. Now, and then there are other tools within Oracle Cloud that we can then use to visualize the data. So this is what's called a data visualization cloud service. So this is uh, a, a kind of data, data discovery, data analysis tool that runs within Oracle Cloud. Um, and you can do various things. So you go in there, you can just do graphing and analysis and exploration and so on. Again, this is running in the cloud, it's zero, down, zero download. Um, runs as a service, it can connect to the database in the cloud, to Hadoop in the cloud, all this kind of stuff. This is your kind of like your initial exploration of the data, okay? And, and you could, you know, you, you, this needs some structure behind it. So behind this there would be typically a metadata layer or one that you design yourself using kind of, you know, whatever. The point is this is your kind of like a data analysis tool here, okay? And this is very good for answering kind of questions where you sort of know what the question is in the first place, um, and giving yourself some counts and so on and so forth, okay. But there's also other tools in the stack as well that you can use. So another one of the tools that, 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 that or services that uh, Mike mentioned was Oracle Big Data Discovery Cloud Service, okay. Now, more what we, what we might call the citizen data, data, data analyst, really, the citizen data scientist. Um, so in the previous sets of slides, you know, we landed log data, we formatted it into kind of like tables in Hive, we displayed it on a screen and all that. So in that case there, we were sort of going very tabular at that point. We were kind of applying schema, we were doing these kind of discovery type tools over the top and, and so on. But imagine if you've got data coming in to Hadoop and it's a bit more kind of unstructured than that. It's, maybe it's coming from different sources, you're not quite sure how it joins together, you're not quite sure about the structure. You know, at this point, you're just trying to feel your way around, really. Um, this tool called Big Data Discovery um, Cloud Service is, is um, I suppose, kind of a, a equivalent to things like Datamir or Platforma and all these kind of tools that are out there. Um, they're like a, you know, a very free-form data discovery environment. What they also have, though, is the ability to do some data wrangling as well. So similar to the preparation service before, but much more kind of interactive and visual, you can start to prepare the data and work with it as well. Um, so that's, that's it there, how it's kind of looking. But going into the detail of it, another kind of really nice use of this tool, Big Data Discovery, is to give you a bit of a catalogue of the data that's in your system. So if you're landing data so into a big data system, in a cloud system or whatever, you're going to end up pretty quickly with, with just tons of just stuff in there. So my analogy is it's like kind of if you're moving house and, and you, know, you could be very good and you could kind of put things in, like it's the things that we as especially blokes never do, is put things into boxes and you kind of label it all up and all that and you move house and you get to the house and you kind of unbox it all and all that kind of business. 
because actually what you end up with is just like everything in unmarked boxes in a room there and you're trying to understand what's in what box and, and so on there. So, so this tool, Big Data Discovery Cloud Service, is excellent for just giving you a kind of bit of a catalogue view of what's in your data lake or data reservoir. Okay. So you can just uh, apply um, an H catalogue kind of schema over, over, over the, uh, the data set um, and then it, it will appear in here. But what's interesting is that you can start to go in there and uh, where are we here? So basically go and do that there. Uh, well, I'll come, I'll come to the mechanics in a second. But you can go in there and you can see metrics and you can see kind of um, the distribution of data and, and so on Okay, in this. Um, now the way big data discovery cloud service works is that it has an engine in there um, that you'd ingest data into and it works. So if you think about, um, if any of you use things like solar or any, 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 any of these kind of like, I suppose, analysis tools that go on top of Hadoop, typically they have like an index engine that you load stuff into to work with. Okay, and so big data discovery works in a similar way as well. So the mechanics of it are that you would go and put a kind of hive table structure over what it is that you're working with in, in the data reservoir. And then you would have an ingest process that goes and samples uh, the data in those, in those hive tables or hive structures or whatever, and then loads it into an index within, within big data discovery. Okay? And, it, and it works on the basis of taking a, a, a sample that, if you were to look at the data in the distribution, it's 99% accurate as a, as a kind of representative of the whole data set. But it means that you can analyze data very quickly. So rather than every, rather than every query you run going against the entire data set, which can be pretty big, obviously, um, it goes against an index data set instead. So then we can go and we can load it in there, and then we can start to look at the data. And so again, this is one of those initial tools that we would use. So we, we, we might use big data prep servers if we kind of know what we're going to do with the data. If we're not sure what we're going to do with it, and we're more going through a discovery process and so on, then we would use big data discovery. Um, you can go in there, you can create sort of projects and so on. Um, going there. What's also interesting is it will automatically enrich the data as well. So if you're loading, one of, again, when I'm doing things manually in, in, in kind of Hadoop, one of the things that can take quite a lot of time is basic stuff like working out from an IP address what was the geographic location of the person who tweeted or, or, or kind of um, or uh, visited, our web, visited our website and so on. So this will go and it will automatically take an IP address and it will, it will create a kind of like a... Um, a geocode out of it. It'll also do things like sentiment as well. So if we go in and um, I've got a thing here, if we go into this example here of stuff it's put in. It, you can also get it to uh, where are we here? Um, uh, explore there, for example, like this enrichment. Here we go. So we can go in here and with this kind of <clears throat> with this again the screen. It's all cloud based as well. Go in here and you can start to apply uh, groovy based kind of transformations to the data. So Go into this bit here, I can go in, there's a whole set of them here. I can go in, for example, extract um, things like, uh, you know, keywords, like nouns and places and stuff like that out there. I can also uh, go in so we can do things like grouping values. These are all standard things. The point is that as a developer, you're, you're just kind of, it's, it's, like, it's like having a, you know, I think Steve Jobs said the iPhone was like a bicycle for the mind sort of thing, or whatever, the computer was, an iPhone, was a bicycle for the mind. The point is here is that as a big data developer, you are just that much more productive. Okay, but the point also is that anything that you develop in here as a, a routine, so you go in and de develop all these kind of transformations, enrichments, and so on, they become scripts that you can then store in here. But then the output of this is then run as a Spark transformation against the entire data set on the, on the Hadoop cluster. So you've got, for example, I don't know, a billion records sitting in, in Hadoop. Um, you know, a million of those would go into, say, this, the index to be kind of viewed and all that. You then do your transformations, but then it pushes those transformations back out to the full data set using Spark and, and so on. So it just makes you, I mean, and, and, and as a developer myself, it's, it's amazing how much more you can get done now using this as opposed to writing all by hand in, in, in kind of Scala or stuff like that. Okay, so this is all kind of useful stuff. Um, there we go, so that all goes in there. Um, and, and so, again, extracting things like terms and, and, and so on out of that. Um, you can define, yeah, so this is, it's, it's, I suppose, again, just again putting this into, into context, what it's doing is it's not trying to replace 
things like Hue or things like um, you know Solar or stuff like you know Spark or Hive or, or whatever, whatever. It, it's it's layering services over these things to make you more productive, um, but you're still working with the core underlying kind of platform, which is the kind of key thing. There you go, and save back into the system there. And that's just it's running through Uzi and, and all that kind of business there. Again, another useful thing is there's a big move within within BI, within analytics, within all these kind of worlds to get the users, the end users, more involved in defining stuff. Okay, so I don't know whether you're IT or, or whatever, I mean, I'm, I'm IT, I suppose. Um, the, 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 the kind of the, the move now is making it so the users can add their own data in as well. So again, in here, users can go in, they can add in more data, they can supplement it. You can connect to sort of like to, to you know, JWC sources, to files and all that kind of business, and they can kind of enrich the data as well. Okay. Um, and the other bit that's interesting is, is it's got this kind of faceted search thing on there as well, where you can go in and you can type in, you know, for example, um, I don't know, my name or, or kind of big data or whatever, and it will go and search across all the indexed sort of like fields and return stuff. So again, I've built stuff like this in, I've built stuff like this in the past with, with things like Morph Lines and, and Flume and, and, uh, and, and kind of, you know, Solar and Hue and all this kind of stuff. It's good, but, you know, these are, again, all kind of IT-driven initiatives these are things that the users can get involved in and they can take that last mile themselves, really, which is kind of useful. Um, and there we go, that's in there. And, and so what this has been useful for so far is, is really telling us you know, which pages were popular in our website, um, who were the people that are tweeting about stuff, who were the kind of the people that, that, that kind of led to uh, lots of page views and all this kind of stuff. But the last bit of analysis that, that we're kind of interested in is, uh, is, is really trying to understand a bit more about who the influencers are. Okay, so, we, so we've got quite a kind of um, uh, a strong community of people on Twitter around our website and stuff that we do. Um, and, and so we're kind of interested to understand, well, who are the people out there in that audience who are influential in driving uh, views of our website? Um, if there's something bad being said about us, we want to know who it is so we can go out there and send someone out and get them kind of kneecapped or whatever. I'm joking, right. um, I, I, but the point is, it's, it's interesting to understand who are the influencers. And we have, you know, we have members of staff who leave us and go and start the companies and whatever. And so, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting to understand, are they still influential in our, in our, in our, kind of, in our, in our network? So, um, we, so we were kind of interested to understand how this kind of works, really. Um, and also... Understand the communities because so we're, we're quite our background is is, is development and, and so on. So our website content is is primarily for a developer audience. Yeah. So we write articles about how to do this, how to do that, and, and so on there. But we're also interested to understand what the what are the communities within that within that audience as well. So you might have a you might have a community of people who are just po posting pictures of Mike with a lightsaber and stuff and, and kind of comedy stuff and, and so on. Other stuff might be about big data, other stuff might be about whatever, really. So trying to understand the communities is interesting. And so, so what we looked at as well is, is so take, again, going back to this, it's, it's all through this thing called kind of graph analysis. So you're probably aware of, of, of this, the idea that as well as there being kind of, um, I don't know, relational style databases and, and uh, maybe OLAP and stuff like that. There's also this concept of kind of graph databases and graph analysis where everything, everything these nodes on there have connections, okay? And depending on how many connections something has, it might be more central to a network and, and so on. So there's a product um, I mentioned a moment from Oracle that does this for us, again, part of the kind of cloud service. So again, looking, looking at, looking at um, the example we had here, let's take um, our website. So we, we might post something on our website about uh, lifting the lid on OBI internals with Linux diagnostic tools. So it's fairly kind of, fairly kind of uh, you know, for the family kind of blog post there. And so somebody here uh, might, this, this guy here might tweet, might, might tweet a link to, uh, to our blog, okay? So uh, this guy here. Um, and that, that tweet, him tweeting about it, it's got animation here, there we go. That tweet there uh, gives us one page view, okay? So that's kind of good. Um, well, in a way, in a sort of not very good sense, but so so then, but that person there has uh, so has followers, and so this person here, you know, reads his tweet, and she goes, "Oh, that's interesting," and therefore that leads to a second page view, you know, and all this kind of stuff here. So basically, you know, the person tweeting about it will, will kind of he, his network will see that tweet, 
and it will then lead to, you know, uh, I suppose more page views kind of happening there. Okay, so that's kind of fairly straightforward. But then that guy is a bit of a nobody, really. Okay, in in, in the kind of the, in, in the kind is of big. Do you know what? When I presented this first, I was thinking it'd be so funny, wouldn't it? If 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 um, I'd say nobody, I'm being facetious. I mean, he's obviously a very very important person. But the point is, compared to the next person, who is this lady here called Gwen Shapira, who's who's a bit of a kind of like a, a, a superstar in the Oracle Big. Well, I suppose she works with, she works with Conf, 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 Confluent now, so. She was an Oracle Ace director like myself, like a, uh, a sort of community thing. She worked for Cloudera, then she worked for, um, uh, for Confluent. So if she posts uh, a tweet about us, then because her network is much bigger, then it leads to a lot more page views. Okay, so the point I'm trying to say here is that, uh, that, um, that different people in our network have more influence and more impact. Okay, and it's because of their network behind them and the size of their connections and, and all this kind of business. So, uh, and so also, what's interesting is, is trying to understand who the influence, if we're trying to understand who the influences are, let's imagine that, uh, let's imagine Mike here. So Mike works for Oracle, and probably a retweet by Mike of something we've written has, has quite a lot of impact, right? Because he's effectively endorsing what we're, what we're saying, which is kind of frightening. Um, but he, he's endorsing what we're saying. So if, if Gwen uh, retweets that person's tweet, that sort of implies an endorsement of, of kind of that person there. Okay. And if her network is really big and she endorses that person, it has, it's, it's more important than, say, that bloke's mum, you know, retweeting him, really, because of the size of the kind of the audience that's there. So you see these kind of, like, relationships are, are quite interesting and try to understand who the, who the influencers are. So, so um, 35 page views there. There we go. Now, so what we have here also is... is, uh, is we have different communities in there as well, and so this one here, you know, we might have a we might have a kind of a, a, um, um, a community here about people that are tweeting about topics. So Big Data SQL is, is an Oracle product that's out there as well. It could be a whole conversation around that. Um, another one here might be, you know, uh, about kind of comedy thing, or whatever. You know, so the point is there are kind of different there are different networks that are there, and. So this, the, these concepts here are of a graph of graph connections of these kind of like of these what we call so these are nodes these are these are basically ver, ver edges or vertexes these are all things that that kind of help us understand the relationships in our data sets and so the Twitter data coming into us we can use it to count things like how many people have tweeted about something but we can also use the network of mentions and retweets and replies and all this kind of stuff to infer the kind of network of, of, of people that, that talk about us. Um, and, and again, I mean, this, this is a bit of a diversion, but if you're trying to understand, if you're, looking, if you're looking at endorsements, then different types of Twitter activity might imply different types of things. So a retweet, I think, is a really good, um, a really good kind of marker of, a, um, of, a, of, a, of, a, of influence, really. So, so if, if, if kind of, you know, if Mike retweets something of mine, that implies that I'm an influence to him, which is, which again is kind of frightening. But, but then replies also implies a, a kind of um, a community and mentions as well. So all these things here we can use to understand the um, we can use to understand the community um, and, and so on here. So so now where, where this gets interesting again is is well, what does this mean in practical terms? So there's a product from Oracle called um, Oracle Big Data uh, Spatial and Graph or Graph and Spatial which will run on either on-premise software or run in the cloud again as well. So what we can do here is we can use this software, this Oracle, this another Oracle service, to help us understand in a kind of, a, in, in a, in a kind of property graph way who the influ influences are and so on. So we've not only got counts, we're trying to understand what is the network and what the influence is and so on. And this has this, the analogy of this or the, the application of this in the real world is in things like Customer 360, where a, com a company is trying to understand um, what are the influences for their customers, you know, how do the customers form decisions and, 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 and opinions about things, similar sort of techniques we use with customers as well. Um, so what we do then is, is we can load, we can take that Twitter data, we can load it into, into, into various kind of formats, into files, and we then put it into big data, graph or spatial. Now in the background, it uses HBase as the kind of storage engine. So the reason we do this on Hadoop 
is because if we use HBase, we can have trillions of these connections. So if you imagine you are, um, I don't know, you are, a, a, you know, you imagine you are, I shouldn't say NSA is probably not a great example, but if you are somebody who's trying to understand all the different interactions going on, if you are, say, um, in recruitment or you're, you know, whatever, the point is you can store a lot of these interactions. If you think about the actual activity going on in Twitter or in places like that, it's, it's millions and trillions of these things going on. HBase and things like Oracle NoSQL Database are a great place to put this into. But looking at the practical application of it, what we can then do is we can start to produce these kind of like diagrams that show us who the influencers are and so on. So what we do here is we can use... Uh, the, the, so Big Data Graph and Spatial has a number of algorithms it can use, one of which is PageRank. Okay, so PageRank is what, is what um, Google used, for example, to work out, uh, you know, the... the um, which, pay, which links are the most important and which sites are the most important. It looks at your back network of, of kind of things that link to you. We can do something similar with this. Okay, so we could work out, for example, in our network that the 10 most influential people in our, in our social network around our, our business were these people here. Okay, so we can use page rank and so on on that. Um, we can also, and you can see here, and all of these things here, these are all the individual retweets and tweets and all this kind of stuff. So it's showing it in different ways, just simple counts, but also as, as a network analysis like this. Um, <clears throat> we can also look at particular people. So we can look at a particular person like me there, I understand all my interactions with people there as well. Um, but we can also do things like shortest paths. So in recruitment, so a lot of... A lot of um, the activity in this event is, is around kind of recruitment. Okay, so imagine that I was trying to recruit one of you in, in this room here, okay, or you're trying to contact me. Um, there are different ways to get to me through different people, and depending on, again, the strength of relationships. So it might be that, that um, there, there's somebody here who, in theory, has treated me, but I don't know them because my, I, you know, I've got one interaction with them, whereas someone else might have been contacting me a lot of times. So the stronger the relationship, the better chance there is of getting to that person through me. So we find a lot of this shortest path stuff is used in recruitment to understand you know, what is the most effective way to, to contact somebody, okay, because of the strength of relationship that person's got. Are they an influence? Are they someone you feel positive about? And that sort of thing. Um, but also, taking it again, looking back at that diagram we had earlier where we had the, um, all those interactions, so every, every tweet and retweet and all this kind of stuff was a line on there. It gets quite kind of busy on there, but with this diagram here, we can show the kind of flow of, 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 of kind of communications. So it might be, again, going back to our example of our company, it might be that, that really um, every kind of, I suppose, kind of new idea or new conversation that starts around us originates with a few certain people, and it roots through certain people. And you can see, effectively, the flow of data and the communication between sort of things here as well. So again, going back to, to real, real, real life uses of it, it might well be that you can start to see here where the conversation is happening. And, and if you would colour these as well by sentiment, for example, you can sort of see that there's a lot of kind of bad stuff said about you by certain people or, or things. And there's a certain route it goes through as well. And, and so this, again, is using this kind of graph analysis and just trying to understand the shape of the conversation around your, your organisation. Um, and, and, and so lastly, there's community as well. Now, this is interesting because um, one way of detecting community is by people's self-declared stuff. So it might be that they put some hashtags on there, like hashtags, you know, hashtag Bristol or hashtag kind of... There was loads of stuff that recently... I'm, I'm from Brighton and we beat Bristol 4-0 the other day, which is kind of, which was kind of yes. Um, and, and so there's a whole bunch of tweets I ingested on, on, on kind of... Uh, on, on, on Bristol the other night. And you'd find clusters of stuff. So you'd find clusters of people talking about sort of like Brighton there clusters of whatever. There was the gorilla as well, which was interesting. The whole gorilla thing was happening. But people, you know, you've got people who declare themselves via their hashtags, but also you can detect communities by actually the interactions that are going on. So there are whole kind of communities of people, and, this, and the classic use of this is things like kind of crime detection and, and all that kind of stuff, where it's not by what you say, it's by who you communicate with. And you can work out these communities just by looking at where the flow of information is and, the, and, and that sort of stuff. So there's some really good applications of it. And going back to the, the original topic, the reason we're doing it on, on, uh, on, on kind of Hadoop is we can put trillions of these things, of these, of these kind of um, interactions into, say, NoSQL. And the reason we're doing it on, on, on cloud and Oracle is because we can do it without any installs. We can like, do it as a service. We can just kind of do it, you know, just put your credit card in. You can just have it running. It expands, it's elastic, and all that kind of stuff. 
and you get all this layering over the top of the base stuff. So, so you know, the, the underlying technology that's being used here, you know, HBase, all that kind of stuff is, you know, it's there for you. But you've got all these kind of pre-built services and, and developer services and so on, on top of it that just mean you can just get moving much quicker, really. Okay, and so this was an example. And I, I wrote this over a few evenings, um, you know, a few, a few weeks ago. Um, and you can see the clusters there. So, I mean, that, that was a little whistle-stop sort of tour of, of what we do, really. Um, I guess the point of this really, and Mike, you're going to sort of finish it? Yeah. So, I mean, the, 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 I suppose the point I wanted to make, really, is, is I think that it's natural to be sort of sceptical and sort of say, well, Oracle, big data cloud and all that, you know, that, that, you know, why would I consider it, really? I think the difference is, is from the cloud side, it's not just the platform stuff and the infrastructure stuff, it's the services over it. It means that as a big data developer, you can just get so much more done quickly, okay? Um, and the reason that you would use, you know, cloud and is that you can just be so agile with it as well. The fact is, there's no installs. It's kind of, you know, it's it's elastic and all this kind of stuff, really. And and we find it very useful. And we've been using it ourselves for our own work and also with customers as well. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Mark. That's uh, okay. given me uh, pause for thought for when I'm going to use Twitter next. <laughs> Communicating with yourself. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to say, yeah, again, thanks to Mark. Um, if any of you are interested in talking to us a little bit more about Big Data Discovery on the cloud or any of the Big Data Cloud services, we have um, one of our team in the, the main demo booth where we, we can go into uh, further detail about using those uh, services. So thanks again and thanks for turning up. Thank you. Thanks.